How does Moses make his tea? Oh. He brews it. <laughs> okay, um, who is the smartest man in the Bible? Abraham. He knew a lot. <laughs> who is the greatest comedian in the Bible? Samson. He brought the house down. <laughs> What kind of man was Boaz before he married? Ruthless. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that works. So that's okay. okay. Being a teenager isn't fun. Like, it's not. I mean, life is a big stressor. We have all of these advanced classes that we can take, all the fine arts, sports, learning to drive, making new friends, relationships, maybe getting a job. You know, the whole works. But what I think is the worst of all has to be making so many tough decisions. I mean, what college do you want to go to? What do you want to major in? You know, what do you want to do with your life? Have you studied enough for that exam? And how many times have you made a decision and, made, and realized it was the wrong one? How do you fix it? You don't. Anyway. So I'm going to be talking about Daniel and the Lions because it's one of those stories that they're taught to the younger kids, but the more you go into depth, it really works for everyone. And I'm not here to preach to you, I'm here to talk with you, and I think that'd make both of us a bit more comfortable. Um, I mean, Daniel was very brave, and he wasn't afraid to die for his faith, and his story is found in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, verses 1 through 28. During that time, Darius had recently, recently been crowned the king of Babylon, and had appointed 120 governors, so to speak, to rule over the kingdom, and Daniel was one of them. Now, Daniel seemed to rise higher than any other, and found favor in the king's eyes. King Darius was planning to set Daniel over the whole kingdom, but the other governors were jealous and tried to get Daniel arrested. But they found no flaw in him. They concluded, we will never find any basis for charges against Daniel unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So out of desperation, they went to the king, proclaiming, may King Darius live forever. He convinced the king to issue a decree that anyone who prays to any god or human other than the king for the next 30 days shall be thrown into the lion's den. When Daniel learned of this new decree, he went home where his windows opened towards Jerusalem. He prayed there three times a day, giving thanks to God, just as he had done before. Then these men went and found Darius praying, or not Darius, Daniel praying. So they went to the king and said, didn't you publish a decree saying that anyone who prayed to anyone except for you would be thrown in the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the law, which cannot be repealed. So they brought Daniel and threw him in the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God, who you serve continually, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the lion's den. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the den. When he came near, he called to Daniel in an anguish voice, Daniel, has your God been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, My God set his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in their sight. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him, because he had trusted in God. At the king's command, the men who had accused Daniel were brought and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and their children. And before they had reached the floor of the dead, the lions had overpowered them and crushed their bones. So I believe that no matter whose perspective you look at, many young people can relate to this in one way or another. I mean, Daniel was very successful. Many people were jealous of him and tried to sabotage him. King Darius was a friend of Daniel and was tricked into betraying him. Now, I chose to talk about the story because it's well known already, much like no one in the ark. And I wanted to go more in depth in a well-known story rather than having to teach the basic concepts of an unknown story. Also, I never knew much about this story. Maybe I was absent that day. Mm -hmm. So researching more on his journey has been really good for me. And what I love most about the story was the fact that Daniel knew the consequences of his actions, yet he continued praying because he loved his God more than he feared death. I believe that everything happens for a reason, and that God wouldn't put you anything if he wasn't going to get you through it. Some people have it easier than others, like how Daniel seemed to get special treatment from the king, but the way the other officials reacted was what caused him to suffer in the end. Now, Daniel seemed to rise higher than any other and found favor in the king's eyes. He was already well known around Babylon and was the third highest ruler. He had recently interpreted some writing on a wall for the previous king, who had then died. So, of course, he'd be fated by the new king. Hey, this guy's the reason why I'm the king. I like him. So, the other governors were jealous and tried to get him arrested, but again, they found no flaw in him. So, Daniel was the king's favorite, and the other government officials were jealous and tried to kill him. So, let's break this down a bit more. I mean, Daniel was faithful before he was favored. The scripture tells us that Daniel prayed three times a day, every day. Keep in mind that he must have been very busy as a politician. 
Yet he made an effort to go to his home and pray three times a day. Daniel knew he wasn't successful on his own, and he gave thanks to God for blessing him. Daniel had made himself this habit of praying, so he probably did it without question. But suddenly there's this law forbidding him to pray to anyone except for the king. What was he supposed to do? I can only imagine what thoughts were running through Daniel's head when he first heard the decree. Now, we don't know if there are others like Daniel in the town, so there may have been people who agreed not to pray right away. But what did they gain? This brings us to Daniel's decision. Who cares if I die? I love God more than I fear death. I mean, just think about that. He's basically writing himself a death sentence. I'm going to die for praying to the God I love. So, knowing very well that he was going to die, Daniel goes to his home to the window facing Jerusalem and prays. He doesn't close the window. He doesn't pray behind a closed door where he's hidden. He doesn't pray at midnight when everyone's sleeping. Daniel's faith did not waver the slightest. He didn't even resist arrest. And then he's thrown into a den with lions. Everyone celebrates. Not quite. King Darius, who Daniel had been loyal to, is restless. He doesn't eat, sleep, or call for entertainers. He worries about Daniel, as any friend would. And at the crack of dawn, he was up and at the entrance to the den to see if Daniel was alive. When it was clear that Daniel had lived because of his faithfulness to God, the men who persecuted Daniel were thrown into the same den that Daniel had just emerged from. Then the king issued a new decree that stated, Every part of my kingdom must praise the God of Daniel. Now, I've been going to my church my whole life. My parents were there long before I was. I was baptized there, I went to preschool there, and I was confirmed there. Needless to say, my church is my second home. I've been taught by the best people in the world, and their words are life-changing. Every year my church puts on a play, a youth musical group puts on a play, and one of the lines in one of the songs says, You are the light of the world, but if that light is under a bushel, then it's lost something kind of crucial. <laughs> my pastor often says, You may be the only Bible someone ever reads. And whenever there is a baptism, one of the pastors will say, Who you are is your gift from God, and who you become is your gift to God. Now, all these quotes come together to form one simple message. I mean, don't hide who you really are. Don't just attend church on a weekly basis and call yourself a Christian. If you think someone's situation reflects one of a biblical figure, tell them. I mean, they may go and read that story, and they could find the closure they've been looking for. If you know there's going to be a message that you think someone needs to hear, go ahead and invite them. I mean, you are exactly who God wants you to be. And showcasing your faithfulness could be the hook for someone else. If you openly talk and are comfortable with your relationship with God, people are going to notice and think, wow, I want what he has, or I want what she has. And that's exactly what happened to Daniel and the king. After God saved Daniel, the king and all who saw that miracle wanted what Daniel had. And the king himself declared that everyone should worship Daniel's God. I mean, many people, especially in the younger generations, believe that being open about their faith would cause them to be somewhat discriminated by other people. Daniel knew he would die if he continued to pray, but he was confident that his relationship with the Lord was more important. I mean, life is temporary and heaven is forever, so why make the temporary one good if it means that the eternal one will be bad? Daniel knew God's love even as he was being thrown into the lion's den, and he was not ashamed. In Mark chapter 8, verse 38, Jesus says, If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes to his Father's glory of the holy angels. So yes, being a teenager is tough. I mean, we're still trying to figure out who we are and who we will, who we will become. I mean, Daniel was a politician. Others were farmers, fishermen, royalty, carpenters, blacksmiths, chefs, and so much more. And I want y'all to know that whatever you decide to do with your life, you can still be open about your faith with the Lord. And if something happens, just remember that God knows what he has planned for us. And if God put you through it, he will get you through it. And I have to thank you all for listening to what I have to say, and I hope it was worthwhile.